nothing scarier than a rabbit charge. Yeah. Straight for the crotch. <laughs> Remember that Kim Lear? I'll get Rosie to cook these up. Listen, uh, why don't you give those to Mr. Chica and Wolverine Lake? She could use the food and you're taking some wood up there anyway, right? Yes, to see Michelle today. Jesus, he's right. I forgot. All right, we'll see her when you get back. It'll be okay, I'll talk to her. He's already missed two meetings. I better do it and she'll revoke my parole. Oh, for what? Bringing some food to an old lady? It's part of your job, Matthew, community outreach. It's blackmail, extortion. Arthritis, my knees can't walk. Well, you gotta, we're, we're taking the tourists out. We made a deal, I promised them. I said I'd take them to the ridge. I never said I'd take them to the burial site. Too far. Oh, oh, I see. He's charging by the mile now. Pay him, Jer. No way, it's extortion. Hey, I'll take him. Jerry, we said an authentic Denny Elder. That's the deal. <laughs> all right, all right. Oh, Jer whips up a little tourist business and everybody wants a cash in. How's the knee? Feeling better? Getting there. Hey, Jer. You seen Matthew? He went hunting with TV. And Charlie. Hey, Michelle. When's TV gonna pay us for Matthew's room? We could be renting it right now. Yeah, he said the band would pay. We haven't seen a penny so far. A smooth little operator, our young chief. We should be happy to have Matthew here. He saved TV's life. TV? Hey, Michelle, what's up? Where's Matthew? I went out to Wolverine Lake. He's bringing some wood to Mrs. Jika and some rabbits we shot. He took the truck? Yeah. He's not supposed to be driving by himself. It's a parole violation. And so is handling firearms and not showing up for our meetings. He's not breaking any laws. That's why he always has them. Charlie, next time you go with him, I want to know. That was my fault. I can see you as soon as he gets back. I have to file detailed reports with the court in Calgary. I'm not going to lie. And you don't have to. He's doing great. He shot a rabbit today. Charlie showed him how to feed the fire. Oh, this is not summer camp. He's on parole. I know that. He knows that. We have to trust him. Like he trusted me. Charlie. <laughs> Come on, look how he turned out. Hey, did Peter talk to you? About what? Marjorie Sebastian and her report to territorial government. Hmm. Well, she's coming up here and she wants to meet you before she delivers the report. Why? Well, you know why. If she's going to recommend an all-done police service in the DHL, she needs to talk to you. Why me? She's the expert. Well, yeah, in the South, but not up here. Well, up here we have a police service. It's called the RCMP. That's right, and the contract's up for renewal this year. The answer to us now, Michelle, not to Ottawa. We can hire them, and we can fire them. If that's what you're going to do, why do you need a study? Talk to Peter!
fire the RCMP? Well, we need to know where you stand on this, Mitch. Why? Because if we're going to have a Dene police force, we need somebody to run it. And you're the obvious choice. Did TV put you up to this? Nobody put me up to anything. <sighs> this is the next logical step. It is if we're doing it for the right reasons. Look, I don't mean you, I mean TV. You know, he hasn't been the same since he came back from Calgary. Well, can you blame him? He almost went to prison for life because some white cop needed a fall guy. Uh, if we're going to get rid of the RCMP, and if I'm going to be part of it, it is not because TV Tanya is out for revenge. I talk to says Matthew's doing fine. Everybody, you mean TV and Charlie. And you think he's dangerous? He's a convicted criminal doing five to eight for assault with a deadly weapon. Well, I brought him up here, not TV, so if you want him sent back, I can do that too, but I think we owe him another chance. And he makes a good poster boy for community policing. That is not why he's here. Joe! Heard someone sniffing around. Went out to see, and he got me. You didn't see him? Didn't see nothing. Just stars. There were some strangers in the coffee shop. Yeah, I know a road crew from Simpson. Just get me home. No, not tonight, Joe. How long till he's on his feet again? Well, probably at least a week. I need a guide. What am I going to tell him? Jerry. All right, all right. You know, um, Matthew is back. I saw the truck. We weren't even here last night. We were up in Swan Landing. What time did you get back? Oh, couldn't tell you. Swan Landing's not dry, so... It's not like we were drunk or anything, but... I'm not done yet. You all came back together in the same car. No, these two guys hitched a ride. Both of you? Yep. With who? Couldn't tell you. But you smell nice. What kind of car? Pick up. So can we go now? We got a 12-hour shift to pull. Hmm. They're here. Don't tell them Joe was mugged, okay? It's the last thing they want to hear. Thank you so much. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh. Francis Gilmore. Jerry Kisselenko. Yeah, this is my wife, Vivian. Pleasure. And that's the rest of the Overhill gang. I'll spare you the names for now. You're going to be getting to know us all too well. <laughs> hey, well, this is uh, our little restaurant, and uh, the motel's around the corner. We have a nice lunch ready, and yes. we're going to have a big feast tonight. And Ooh. drumming. <laughs> drumming. Yo, Yo, you're going to love it. <laughs> Elsie. Elsie. Uh, this is Elsie Zache, Francis, and Vivian Gilmore. How do you do? A pleasure to meet you. Look at these baskets. Oh, gorgeous. Aren't they beautiful? Thank I, you. J just a sec. Just someone else I want you to meet. Hey, Daniel. Daniel, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Daniel Dela, Francis and Vivian Gilmore. How do you Hello. do? <laughs> Daniel's a hunter and a very, very good guy. <laughs> just in case Joe doesn't come back in time, Daniel will be happy to take you out. Come back from where? I think hunting, Joe... hunting. I'm just saying in case he doesn't come back in time. We'll talk about it later, okay? Let's go inside, shall we? Yeah. Hi. Good then. Let's eat.
tourists are here. Yeah, I know, I saw. It's okay. Sit. You missed our meeting yesterday. TV said I had to go to Wolverine Lake. And on the way back, I got a flat tire and the spare was no good. Hmm. So how'd you get back? Some guy stopped and gave me a tire. Who? I don't know. I forget his name. A white guy. By the time I got back home, I figured it was too late to come see you. So what'd you do after you got home? I went to the river. There's a spot Charlie showed me. It's where I fish every morning. I see the sunrise. It's nice. Anybody see you? No. It wasn't me who beat up on Joe Gumba, if that's what you're getting at. This is the third meeting that you've missed. TV said that... I don't care what TV said. You answer to me, not the chief. I just don't feel like I'm on parole here. Well, what do you feel like? I don't know. Well, like what? Just say it. Like I'm free. So how does that feel? What do you want me to say? That I'm scared of feeling free? That I'd rather be in jail? Look, sometimes people get scared. How would you know? You know what? I'm an alcoholic. And I've been sober 18 years. And I still feel scared every single day. I'm trying. And it's hard. It's hard sometimes. You know, with all these nice people. And no one knows how alone you feel. You're worried about Charlie, aren't you? This is not about Charlie. Or me. Or TV. This is about you. And you are on parole, and you either follow the rules or you're out. Feed the fire and give thanks to the Creator. Do go. Okay, D, D. Da, ah. No, see, ma, see. A dear dear. Good then. Let's eat. Cory. Just a bit of What's she doing? Well, Joe is supposed to take them out to the old burial site, so I guess Daniel's gonna have to do. He looks familiar. Who? Francis. Hi, remember me? Yeah, Harv Gunderson from Jack Saw Lake. Um, my brother Peter. 
Uh, did you hear about our feast? Well, there was some tapping on the old moccasin telegraph. And, well, I did have to come by and pick up my spare tire. Somebody from here had a blowout uh, near Wolverine Lake. I gave him a tire. I know who it is. I'll get him. Thanks. Wouldn't mind a hunk of that moose. <laughs> sure. Did you talk to Michelle? Mm -hmm. Is she gonna back us? When she's ready. What exactly does that mean? It means don't pressure her, or she'll dig in. Okay, so she's still not sure. It doesn't really matter, as long as she doesn't try to stop us. It matters a lot. When this goes through, she's in charge. She's the only one that's qualified. What about Marjorie? She's not ready and you know it. If you want my support, that's the way it's got to go. I understand. And if you want to be first minister, we need to know you're with us all the way. With or without Michelle. I don't think you want to take me on TV. All I'm saying, Peter, is that the Mounties are history. We've got the votes, and anyone who backs them, well, they're just not looking to the future. Spend it all in one place, eh? Ah, and how's Corporal Kennedy tonight? Fine, thank you. Um, if you don't mind, I'd like a word with Matthew. Oh, you bet. Let's go. Huh. So the guy who gave you the tire is here. His name's Harv Gunderson. I guess he wants his tire back. I owe you an apology. Damn cops, they never give you a break, eh? You got that right. So let's talk tomorrow. He said he would. He better. How much did you give him? Fifty bucks. I told him to get the rest from Joe. Did you tell Joe? Not yet. Jerry! Come on, he had a concussion. I didn't want him to, uh... What? I thought I heard something. Did you hear anything? No. Let's go. All set for the burial grounds? Oh, we can't leave without Francis. What do you mean? Where would he go? I don't know. I, I got up this morning and he was gone. Who was? Francis. <laughs> maybe he got lost. Or maybe he had an accident. Well, did he say where he was going? No, he just left. Oh. Well, we should wait. No, no. You go ahead and I'll wait. Where's Daniel? He went hunting. What? Well, that's what his kids said. Great. <laughs> Charlie could take them. You know where to go, right? Sure. There. You're perfect. You see? That's how the Dene pass on their traditions from one generation to another. <laughs> hey, Matthew. You want to come along? I can't. Oh, come on, man. I got to work. Sure, go ahead. Yeah, let's go. Follow him. Have a great day. That was cool. Letting you go. Maybe she's going to lighten up now. Until the next time. Yeah. She hassles me, too. All the time. It's not the same, Charlie. She's your mother. It's not here. What is it? His money belt. Well, how much was in it? About a thousand dollars. Half the cash for our trip. Michelle. 
When we were locking up last night, Rosie thought she heard somebody snooping around. What time was that? After midnight. Uh, Vivian, did you and Francis leave the room at any time last night? No. No, I wasn't out of this room until I went for breakfast. Um, well, maybe he just didn't want to leave it lying around. Is anything else missing? Well, I, I don't think so. Maybe one of these baskets. He bought so many. I bet he just went to pick some berries in the woods. He'll be back soon. TV. Hey, Marjorie. Welcome to Lynx River. Hi. I'm Marjorie Sebastian. Michelle Kennedy. Heard a lot about you. I bet you have. Muffler broken? What muffler? Nice roads you got up here. <laughs> hey, can she stay upstairs uh, at the detachment? Sure. Yeah. Could you take her, though? Sure. I've got a missing tourist. Oh. So. See you later. So, have you talked to her yet? Is she on side? Yeah, she'll come around. If she doesn't, we got you. We need her, TV. Oh, well, why? We've actually done what we want to do up here. All she knows is Lynx River. It doesn't matter. People trust her, especially the elders. It's going to be a lot harder to sell if she's not out in front. And Peter's working on her. Do you trust him? No, but I know what he wants. Hmm. How's Matthew Fowler doing? Oh, he's doing excellent. He's doing really well. Here. What is it? Francis, come here. Just take your time to get back. back to town and tell TV I'm gonna need some help with the body when I'm done go on get going we need to get the body to Yellowknife and I need forensics here well how long is that gonna take yeah okay Vivian's resting so how about the rest of them we're gonna fly him back to Simpson the band's gonna refund their money hmm. Maybe I shouldn't be here. I don't want to be in the way. You know, uh, forensics might not be here for a day or two. I could use your help. How long have he been out here? I'd say he'd been dead two to four hours. Any chance it was an accident? No way. He was plugged to death. Repeated blows. There was a lot of bark and splinter in the head wounds. And his money belt was empty. Well, if it was a piece of wood, all I'd have to do is toss it in the river, halfway to the earth streets by now. Yeah. Where does that path lead? Uh, to the burial site. That's where the tourists are going. Well, where was Francis going? Just for a walk way out here? No way. If he was just going for a walk, he wouldn't cross the river. Why not? It's not that easy to cross. You have to know where. Unless somebody told you. Was Francis talking to anyone in particular? Francis talks to everybody. He loves people. That's how we met. Well, I was a travel agent and, and he was booking a trip to Europe. And he started chatting with me the way he does. And we fell in love. What about last night at the feast? Matthew, I think his name is. 
What were they talking about? Someone told Francis that Matthew is on parole and Francis was giving him a big pep talk. He was a, a teacher before he retired. He loves to help people, especially young people. Did he and Matthew make any plans? Uh, talk about going fishing. I, I, I didn't hear. Anyone else stick out in your mind? Um, uh, that, that hunter, Daniel, he was supposed to be our guide this morning, but he, he never showed. Do you know what they were talking about? No, uh, no, no, they were, they were off by themselves. I never really wanted to come here anyway. I just knew it was a bad idea. A bad idea? Why? We're losing money on this trip. More than we can afford. Goodwill. It's all about goodwill, he said. We'll more than make up for it in the future. <laughs> Dead. Murdered. Somebody passed his head and stole his money. Probably the same one who robbed Joe. We don't know that. We don't know anything yet. So let's not start drawing conclusions or pointing fingers. And if anybody did see Francis this morning, please tell Michelle or Marjorie Sebastian. Who's she? TV's friend. Another friend. Like, uh, one's not enough. She's XRCMP. And she's helping Michelle. So don't start trouble. Hey, boys. How you doing? You all right? What are you staring at? He didn't do anything. He was with me. Nobody said he did. said anything. TV said someone was beaten up and robbed here the other night. Yeah, Joe Gomba, an elder. Maybe there's a connection. Well, there was a road crew in town, but they're in Fort Simpson last night. They are being questioned now, though. Any priors? Yeah, two of them had done time for robbery. Well, there's a lead. What about that hunter, the one that was supposed to take them out this morning? Daniel, what about him? Why didn't he take them? He's a hunter. He was out hunting. Well, do you have a suspect in mind? <clears throat> what were you and Francis talking about? Self-respect. What did you do after the feast? Me and Charlie went for a walk. After that? Went to my room. So what'd you do this morning? What I always do, I went fishing. So you could see the sunrise? <sighs> Same place as always? Did you see Francis? No, nope. didn't see anyone. Then what'd you do? I went to work at the band hall. Straight from fishing? And I went to my room first. Why? Changed my clothes. I got onto a trout, I went into the water, I got soaked. So you just left your clothes in the room? I threw everything in the washer first. Why? What's the rush? <laughs> I was out of clean clothes. I asked Rosie to throw everything in the dryer, then I went to work, then Charlie asked me to go with him. I'm gonna have to look at your room. Go for it. I got nothing to hide. Okay. Well, that's it. Like hell it is. What now? We searched his room. What about the road crew? What about them? You said yourself two of them have priors. For petty theft. 
I just... I don't think we should just assume... Corporal Kennedy, link server. Uh, hi, Rod. Uh, was it just one? Which one? Anyone see him? Okay. Great, thanks. There's your answer. That was Simpson. They caught one of the guys from the road crew with some coins of Joe's. He confessed to the robbery, and he was back in Simpson last night. Can anyone confirm that? Yeah. He spent the night at the Nahani Inn. There were witnesses. You coming? Hey, you're, uh, you're still horse in it, eh? Hey, hey, what, what happened? What did Michelle say? Nothing, it doesn't matter. Well. waiting for me to screw up. But you're not going to. I won't let you. Why? I didn't squat for you. You had half the world looking after your ass when you were in jail. You're a freaking tourist on a free pass. I thought I was going to die in there. You gave me a way out. Look around you, Matthew. This place is a way out for you. A way out? What am I supposed to do here? Your job. You got wood to cut, mail to deliver. You have friends here. And then what? I feel like I'm caught in the headlights. Everybody's watching me. Just waiting for me to... Smash down their doors and rape their daughters. Let's give it some time. I said that I was going to get you out, and I did. Now I'm saying that it's going to be all right, and it will. Trust me. My kids were this neat. <laughs> Send them to prison for a few years and they might be. What time did he get back? I don't know. So you didn't see him till after his stuff was in the wash? Does he always do his own laundry? You think we're going to do it? He's already got a free room. Where's the other one? Wasn't in the washer or in the dryer. Are you sure? Have you guys taken anything out of here? No. Excuse me. Excuse me. Are you Daniel? I'm Marjorie Sebastian. The cop, TV's friend. Did you hear what happened? I'm helping Michelle. Could, could I ask you something? Mrs. Gilmore said that you were supposed to take the tourists out this morning, but you changed your mind? I was tracking moose. I couldn't get back in time. Oh, so you didn't get a chance to tell them? I didn't think of it. I got a big family to feed. Okay. Did you get them? The moose. Not yet. He was tracking a moose. Is 
See what I mean? This is the only place near town where you can cross the river on foot. Matthew had to see Francis. He couldn't miss him. He fishes here every morning. Tell me what you're thinking. Matthew and Francis make a plan to meet this morning. To go fishing. But really to talk about Matthew's problems. Matthew says, don't tell anyone. And Francis agrees. Why? He's a teacher. He wants Matthew to trust him. So they meet. Matthew takes Francis across the river, brings him back into the bush, robs him. And kills him, just like that. He doesn't mean to kill him. He just wants the money to get out of here. So now what's he going to do? He throws the murder weapon in the river. He goes back to town. His clothes are full of blood, so he washes them. He hides the money. He goes to work. Now he's just hunkering down waiting. You don't have a single piece of evidence. Matthew lied about St. Francis. You don't know that. You can't prove it. I can't prove anything until Matthew takes the money and runs. Or kills somebody else. This is exactly what happened to TV in Calgary. He's Indian, so he has to be guilty. Matthew is an ex-con, so it has to be him. TV was framed by a dirty cop to cover up the murder. I am not a dirty cop. I don't want Matthew to be guilty. But you assume he is. A screwed up, paranoid Indian man, full of rage, a threat to the community. Hey, I was a Mountie too. I know the profile. I've used it a hundred times and I've been wrong. Yeah, it happens. Maybe it's happening here. I know how important Matthew is to you. I know what he represents. The white justice system failed him, but we won't. You take the broken boy up north and make him whole again. But you don't believe it. Sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. Hey, Jer. Um, sorry, there, there's a pair of socks missing. Yeah, there was an odd one there. Michelle took it. Why? I don't know. She wouldn't say. have to stay cool. Nothing's gonna happen to you. Why? Because I'm innocent? Because I won't let it. Whatever you say, TV. Uh, Matthew. Why did Michelle take my sock? It's the other one she's looking for. Any idea where it is? Did you kill him? Does it matter? It matters to me. What do you think? I think you're innocent. And if you give us enough time, we can prove it. Michelle's already made up her mind it's Matthew. She's just going through the motions. Well, maybe he did it. You thought about that? Either way, she's not thinking right. She can't. It's Charlie. She's scared out of her mind something's going to happen to him, and that's all she's thinking about. So what are you saying? She shouldn't be on this case. It's too personal. It's personal for her with everyone in this town, and that's why we trust her. But it's not the same. This is a conflict of interest. You're the one with the conflict of interest, and you're this close to conspiring to obstruct justice. Okay, well, let's let Yellowknife decide. Inspector McKendrick. And go behind her back. 
She's a mother protecting her child, and Matthew deserves a fair shake. People understand once we explain. You got it all figured out, eh, TV? Okay. Call. Well, you're a cabinet minister. It'd be better if it came from you. Well? I will talk to Michelle. Okay. But I will not go behind her back. Okay. Hey, Charlie. Where were you? With Matthew? So how's he doing? How do you think he's doing? Half the town thinks he's a murderer because of you. He has to live with his reputation. That's part of being on parole. <laughs> yeah, and I have to live with you. Charlie. When I came here, you didn't want me here either. Charlie Muskrat, the fire starter. <laughs> I had to beg you to let me stay. That is not fair. I was mourning my daughter. Poor Hannah. No wonder she ran away. Hi, I'm Marjorie. What's your name? Carl. Hi, Carl. Oh, that's a nice basket. Where did you get that? From Rosie. Oh. The man who died, was he here by any chance? Where's your dad? He's up at his cabin. Oh, okay. And where's that? It's up past the burial site. On the same trail? Oh. Thanks. Daniel, are you there? Hi. Sorry to barge in. Can I help you? We're still trying to figure out where Francis was going yesterday. So I followed the path and this is where I ended up. You didn't see him around here, did you? Nope. Tea? How's that moose coming? Lost him. Are you tracking him on your own? Yeah. Take a seat. Went to your house this morning. Met your kids. Nice family. Just going door to door, seeing if anyone saw Francis yesterday. They didn't see him. Terrible business, eh? Yeah. Those are your parents? Yeah. They passed on? What are you looking for? The money? Matthew saw. Is he the only suspect? I just saw Charlie. He's looking pretty upset. You guys have a fight or something? About Matthew? 
Listen to me, Michelle. Maybe you should let this case go. You've been scared for Charlie ever since Matthew got here. Every time they go off somewhere, you're worried that something's going to happen. You're damn right I'm scared. Aren't you? How can you be objective? If this was any other jurisdiction in the country, you wouldn't be allowed to work this case. What's he got on you? What? TV. He put you up to this, didn't he? Is this what community policing is going to be about? If the cop doesn't do what the chief wants, then you get another cop? I need the keys to the band truck. Actually, I have to check with Michelle first. Why? Because she asked me to. Hey! I went to his house and I saw one of those berry baskets from the gift shop full of tea and tobacco. Why would a hunter have one? Unless someone gave it to him as a gift. And we know Francis practically bought out the whole store and we know Vivian thought one was missing. So you went to the cabin? There were two teacups on the table. Two of everything. So I asked him if anyone else besides himself had been in the cabin, and he said no. <sighs> Instead of arguing about it, why don't we just lift some prints? It won't take long. We'll just send the results to Yellowknife and see if we have a match. Matthew just stole the band truck. We just need to talk. I didn't kill him! Matthew, no one's saying you did. She is! TV, get back! TV! Come on, Matthew. Give me the knife. It's gonna be okay. Just give me the knife. Matthew, you're not the only person we're investigating, okay? You're lying! No, I'm not. It's true. Trust me. It's gonna be okay, Matthew. Just give me the knife. Just give me the knife, Matthew. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> okay. I didn't do it! I didn't do it. Why don't you believe me? I didn't do it. <laughs> well, it's not like I gave him the damn keys. He just took them off my desk. Next thing I know, he steals the freaking truck and he's gone some. I told you you should never let him borrow that truck. Oh, shut up. Peter. He's 
Z, okay? Yes, no thanks to Michelle. She almost killed him. If it wasn't for Marjorie, she would have. Peter, she's not going to give him a chance. You have to call. And what about all the chances that she gave you when you were a punk kid shooting up windows and running booze? Or have you forgotten all about that? Stealing cars, beating on the wife, running out on the family. Hey, hey! Beat it! What? You work for me, Harris. Not for him. No, I said get out! No, I haven't forgotten. But she has. Bullshit. You're trying to sway her investigation. And I'm not going to help. Suit yourself. But don't expect any help from me or my friends when you're trying to get yourself appointed as first minister. We need someone we can count on. You think you have that much influence? I don't. Well, I guess we're just going to have to find out. You saw Francis cross the river, didn't you? We waved to each other. He said, is it safe? I said, yes. That was the last time I ever saw him alive. Facts just came through from the lab in Yellowknife. Francis' prints were on the spoon. Inspector McKendrick, please. This is Peter Kennedy. Yeah, I'll hold. Let me show. What's up? Um. Francis was at your cabin, wasn't he? I took a spoon from your cabin. His fingerprints are on it. What was he doing there? Wanted to talk. About what? I was supposed to take him to the burial site. Made him some tea, and he left. Why didn't you tell us? Because he got killed. They want to get involved. But why didn't you take them to the burial site? Like I said three times already, I was hunting. But you weren't hunting. You just said that you were at your cabin. Michelle. First he brings you tea and tobacco to your house. Then he treks all the way through the bush to your cabin. There has to be some reason why he was so interested in you. I don't like guiding for white people. Makes me feel like I'm kissing ass. I was only doing it this time because of what happened to Joe. Thought about it some more and I changed my mind. And you know that's true. She thinks I killed him. You don't know me. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. We know Francis went to visit him. We know Daniel lied about it. Why are we walking away? You want to know about native policing in the North? Rule number one, know your community. I know Daniel Dela. There's not one reason on earth why he would kill Francis Gilmore. Maybe he needed the money. He has always needed the money, but he has never stolen a penny in his life. I know that for a fact. And unfortunately, we can't say the same thing about Matthew Fowler. Why did he lie? He lied to you, not to me. If you do not follow this up, I'm going to report this to your superiors. You mean the RCMP or TV? Mm. 
Mitch. Peter, don't start. I need to show you something. Please. What is it? It's an old school photograph. That's him. Father Francis, 1968. That was his first year and my last. You recognize him? It's Daniel. That was his first year, too. I was the only guy that he knew from Lynx River. So he used to dog me and drive me crazy. Until the priests made him stop. I tried to keep my eye on him, but I, uh, I lost track of him. Just like I lost track of you. And I made some calls. Francis left the priesthood in the 80s and moved to Edmonton. Became a teacher. And as far as I can tell, he never came back up north. What are you going to do? Nothing. You have to question him. He didn't do it. He didn't kill Francis. You don't know that. Yes, I do. And so do you. And I am not going to put Daniel through that. Well, if you don't, someone else will. On the left side. The fork is the devil's trident. The devil sits on the left side of God. Knife and spoon on the right. Good then. Let's eat. And always with that big smile. Bunch of bush kids. What do we know? God help us if we got it wrong. Was he a face slapper? A hair puller? He was a shaker. Did he remember you? I'm sorry. No. Little Daniel. I sat right in front of you. Your little kitten. That's what you called me. Because I never spoke and I was always crying. Oh, Lord. It was a long time ago. There were so many little boys and girls. Look at you now, strong as an oak, kids of your own, Daniel is a It was you at the motel that night, wasn't it? I didn't have any idea what I was going to do. I just wanted him to remember me. Remember who I was. So you went up to the cabin, so you wouldn't have to see him. Then he remembered. What did he want? Forgiveness. I'm wondering if I could talk to you for a minute. He said he's been needing to talk to somebody about this for over 30 years. But just seeing him again, it's like I was right back in there. The smells. The lye soap they used on the floors. Boiled cabbage. 
And the sounds. The scissors when they chopped our hair. The kids. Speaking Denny in their sleep. Having nightmares, screaming for their parents. What did he say? You were the saddest little boy. Cute as a button, but so sad. I was scared. I didn't know anybody. And you never spoke. Not English. I barely knew how. And when I spoke Slavy, you beat me. didn't mean to be cruel. At least I didn't. I loved the children. We thought we were making you fit for the world. Giving you a future. Saving your soul. you think now we made a terrible mistake you took me away from my parents you taught me to hate them I never saw them again and they never saw me and you'll never understand what that did to us is there nothing I can do in a practical way the school, we, we all know things went on. Things that are hard to talk about. Did he abuse you? I just told you. Sexually? No. Why did he offer you the money? He just told you. There was over a thousand dollars in that money belt, and he wanted to give it all to you. There's something else, isn't there? Something personal. Stop it. All those little savages, they all look the same to him. Why did he remember you? Why you? Tell me, what happened? It was my father's drum. We brought it to school, and we hid it in the bush. And he said to me, as long as you have this drum, I will be with you, and you will be with me. thing I had left from home and they never found it until that day I understand how you must have felt when you saw him after what he did all of those memories coming back nobody can blame you Daniel I never 
killed him. You're just gonna let him go. What more do you want from him? What about Francis? He just told you. What he told me is that he had every reason to kill him. You didn't hear him. He said he just wants to forget. That is you talking. You don't know what's in his head. His cabin should be a crime scene. Why is she defending Daniel? Are they lovers or something? No, no. Well, they went to school together. Something must have happened. Michelle didn't go to residential school. But I saw it in her face. It was like she was there with him. No, she kept running away. They dragged her back, beat the hell out of her. She ran away again. She wouldn't let them cut her hair. She wouldn't speak English. She wouldn't say the prayers. So they just kept beating her and beating her. This went on for a couple of years. And then she tried to burn the place down. After that, finally, they just let her go. How old was she? I don't know. She must have been about 12 or 13. Well, if she's been through all of that, why can't she give Matthew a chance? Because of Charlie, I think. I never really know what she's thinking. No one does. Doesn't matter, though. I know what I have to do. TV, let me talk to her one more time. She's not going to listen. Well, let me try. He stole a vehicle. He threatened myself and others with a knife. Well, then revoke his parole and transfer him back to Calgary. I don't want him in Calgary. I want him here. He's a suspect in a murder investigation. I understand there's another suspect wandering around scot-free. Why is that? Because in my judgment, he's not a flight risk. I realize this is a very awkward situation for you. What with Matthew Fowler and your son being good friends. Which is why I'm taking you off this case and replacing you with another officer. Now, in the meantime... So what else did TV Tanya tell you? Or was it my brother, or was it both? That's none of your business, Corporal. Now, if you let me finish... Putting my community at risk makes it my business. Because that's what they're doing by putting all this pressure on you like this. Damn it, Corporal, let me finish. Now, look, maybe you don't care what happens to the RCMP in the North, but I do. Right now, we need friends, not more enemies. And as far as I'm concerned, you're off this case. Of course, a decision like this has to go through channels. It could take some time. How much time? Hell, the paperwork alone could take several weeks. Then we have to find a replacement, and right now we're short-staffed. So, in the meantime, you will stay on duty. What about Marjorie Sebastian? She's a good cop, an excellent officer. But unfortunately, she's no longer a member of the RCMP. Now, if she wants to serve under your authority, that's fine by me. Thank you. And what about Matthew Fowler? Release him. But, Inspector... Michelle... I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do about it. You understand? Yes, sir. Good. This is my daughter, Hannah. We weren't getting along, so she went to live with her father in Calgary. It was an accident. I'm sorry. You know, um, my generation blames itself for everything. And it seems like your generation blames itself for nothing. It's all politics now. The land. The residential schools. How can we use it? But for us, it's still happening. It's like a wound that never heals. I saw it every day on the reserves. Self-hatred, it's like a cancer eating us up. And that's why we have to separate. 
We have to heal ourselves. Nobody can do that for us. No. Yeah, I know. But healing is not the same as revenge. TV wants revenge. I'm not TV. There's just so many bad memories. Too many. Maybe it's time that we just step out of the way. Michelle, we need those memories. The good and the bad, we need them. So what happened? He doesn't kill him here. Francis leaves. Daniel sits there, thinking about the drum, thinking about the school, getting angrier and angrier. And finally he snaps. He catches up to Francis on the path. Francis sees him. He knows what's going to happen, so he runs. Cut my hair. Smash my drum. He deserves to die. What about the money? He takes it. <laughs> Why not? He gets rid of the branch. Hides the money God knows where. Second possibility. Matthew sees Francis cross the river. Sees the money belt. Is it safe? He's not sure what he's going to do because Francis likes to walk. He's fast. Next thing Matthew knows, he's at Daniel's cabin. Daniel? Now what's he going to do? He could go back, but his blood is up. He can smell the money. So he waits. He's been in prison. He's good at waiting. He's alone. Bingo. Francis never saw it coming. He throws his stuff in the washer, then asks Rosie to throw stuff in the dryer, goes to work. We're missing one sock. Yeah. And the money. Where is the money? He stashed it because he knew I'd be coming after him. Sooner or later, he'll grab the money and run. And if it's Daniel? He won't be able to live with himself. Sooner or later, he'll crack. Hey. Hey. I released Matthew. Hmm. So, um, who called McKendrick? Was it you? I almost did. Why, Peter? What's going on? TV and his pals aren't just after the Mounties. That's the tip of the iceberg. This is about political power and economic power. It's about who controls the North. And me, I'm just trying to stay one step ahead of them. So I'm... I make deals. Play for time. Send it for you, First Minister. If I get there, I can control them. Clark. At least slow him down. I don't know. He smells real power. I wouldn't count on it. Ah. 
I still think I can take him. I'm really scared for Charlie. Keep an eye on him for me. I will. Packed a bunch of sandwiches so they don't starve to death. <laughs> well, how far is it? You'll see. Come on, let's go. Hey, hang on. What's that for? Maybe get us a rabbit. Veggies are already going bad. I gotta throw them out. No! I'll make a soup. A rotten veggie soup. That's nice, Jerry. A bush plant? Yeah. They must have them around here somewhere. The only place near here is Wolverine Lake. Where's Matthew? I don't know. Fishing, maybe? No, he's not at the river. I checked. I can't find Charlie either. Michelle. I guess I did clear some stuff, but it belonged to me. I asked you. It was a crazy week. I guess I just forgot. I want to go there, Charlie. No, there's not enough time. You're going to take me. Come on, give me up. You're gonna take us to Wolverine Lake. We're gonna charter a plane. You killed him. Get up. Go! Don't try to play me, and I'll shoot you. Coley Creek. Why there? Fishing. Charlie asked if we could take Matthew there. Hey, Michelle. My rifle is missing. I'm coming. No! Shut up. Keep moving. Here. They left the path. They're heading to Wolverine Lake. There's blood. What's in Wolverine Lake? Horse planes. Why'd you do it? Ask your mother if she knows. Knows what? Me, Charlie. Me. Circling. Charlie's leading him back to town. People 
liked you. You had friends. <laughs> Don't kid yourself. Nobody wanted me here. Except for TV. He was using me. Big shot. Just like, what's his name? What's his name? You mean the guy you killed? I wasn't going to kill him. It just happened. And what about me? I wasn't using you. I thought we were friends. Yeah, well... We ain't friends anymore, are we? Sorry, Charlie. Try it. It's too late. You came around too late. this this what you wanted all along tv it was me i shot him he was gonna kill charlie Sorry. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. No. Shh. It's okay. 
It's okay, I got you now. Everybody's at the river. We're going to offer prayers for Francis and Matthew. We need you there. I made him promise. He wasn't strong enough, TV. He's not you. He was trying. You never gave him a chance. I'll remember this. Come on, TV. Thank you.